And that off in the John Durkin Memorial Punchestown Grade 1 Chase. All six starting back their campaigns. They're coming to the first of 15 fences, and it is Statler, the race outsider, and appreciated. They're over a couple of lengths in front, a faster slow, taking on the Willie Mullins Quintet, Blue Lord on the inside of Galapin Deschamps. Emphatic in the race last year, and Asterian for Lange the Grey is the back marker. Spending a little bit more time in the air than the others was Galapin Deschamps as they turn into fences three and four. Striding on by less than four lengths is appreciated from Statler, faster, slow. Galapin Deschamps back into fourth ahead of Blue Lord with the back marker Asterian for Lange as they link up with fence number three, first of two in the home straight. The leader is appreciated, and Patrick Mullins from Statler, Rachel Blackmore. On the inside is Fast or Slow and JJ Slevin, tracked by Galapan Deschamps and Paul Townend. Blue Lord and Daryl Jacob with sixth of the six, Austerian for Lange, the man of Michael O'Sullivan. Coming up to past the winning post, having jumped their first four fences. The leader is appreciated from Statler, joined for second by Faster Slow, followed uphill by Galapan Deschamps, the position in front of stable companion Blue Lord and then Asterian for Lange. Uphill they go to the fifth. This will be 11 fences from the finish and it's appreciated the leader. Over well from Statler. Being followed at the turn by Faster Slow and Galapin Deschamps with history between them. And then Blue Lord and Asterian for Lange. A little bit more spaced out going to the next fence, which is number six. Appreciated. Leads by at least four lengths to Statler, Faster Slow, Galapin Deschamps, Blue Lord, and Asterian for Lange. Little or no changes, making the descent to the next two fences, bringing them past the halfway stage. And it's appreciated, leading Statler, Faster Slow, Galapin Deschamps in fourth. The magnificent Gold Cup winner, surprisingly overturned by the reopposing Faster Slow in the festival equivalent, has two behind, Blue Lord, Asterian for Lange, on now to the first of two ditches. This fence coming up will be number eight. And it's appreciated with a reduced advantage over Statler, Faster Slow, Galapin Deschamps, Blue Lord, Asterian for Lange. Away from that, small error, Blue Lord, but innocuous enough as they swing into the back straight. Seven fences left to jump as they pass halfway. Appreciated its leaders down to less than three lengths by Statler, and then Faster Slow and Galapin Deschamps, with the final couple, Blue Lord and Asterian for Lange. First of three in the back straight. Seven to jump. It is appreciated over the necks from Statler, followed by Faster Slow and then Galapin Deschamps, Blue Lord, and Asterian for Lange. The Grey continues the back marker. Middle fence down the far side, six from the finish. Appreciated. Continues to go along in the lead from Statler. Faster Slow, tracked by Galapin Deschamps, and then Blue Lord and Asterian for Lange. Their final ditch, five fences from the finish, and last one in the back straight. Up and over, appreciated from Faster Slow, who landed in second. Statler on the outside, almost joined for third by Galapin Deschamps, and then Blue Lord and Asterian for Lange. As they tighten a fraction, just over five furlongs to go, and four fences left to jump. And the John Durkin Memorial Punchestown Grade 1 chase. Appreciated by two lengths. Into second and third, respectively, Faster Slow and Galapin Deschamps being followed by Statler, who continues to lose ground to the leaders. And then Blue Lord and Asterian for Lange, although the back marker very much in touch as they've just returned to their point of departure. For the jump, appreciated at this one. From Faster Slow, Galapin Deschamps, a tad sticky in third. And then Blue Lord Statler pushed along as one behind Asterian for Lange. This is the third last fence taking for the home turn. Appreciated is the leader from Faster Slow. Paul Tarnan has lowered himself in the plate. 
In between them is Blue Lord, who's making ground, followed by Asterian for Lounge, and knocked back to last is Statler, into the straight. Two fences left to jump, and it's four abreast. Appreciate it, faster slowed the red cap. Galapan de Shaw on the outside of Blue Lord, who's up into a challenging position. They've one fence left to jump, and the John Durkin Memorial punches down grade one chase, and it's still appreciated. Appreciated is keeping on Darley from faster slow. Galapan de Shaw and Blue Lord, the final fence. It's appreciated. Faster slow on the inside. Galapan de Champ is switching between them. Faster slow on the inside is inching up as they go to the line. Faster slow has lifted it from appreciated and Galapan de Champ turned and return. Followed in then by Blue Lord Austerian for Lounge and Statler. Faster slow picks up where he left off at the festival, winning another major punches town chase that John Durkin Memorial. Just bring in the big race hero, JJ Slevin. JJ, what a moment for you. Thrilling race to watch. Just what was it like to be part of and come out on the right side of it? Oh, yeah, sure. Looking very, very lucky, Gary. Uh, he's a wonderful horse and I'm just very lucky to be on him. Yeah. Talk us through the race from your perspective. A little bit keen earlier on, but were you happy with the run round? Yeah, I got, ended up in a nice position. He was in my hands a little bit early, I suppose, as can be his want. And uh, he was running under one or two probably because of that. We wouldn't let him, when he relaxed and I could use his jump, and he was very good. And uh, we didn't go quick and... Uh, we were, we were never afraid of a sprint, you know. We kind of, we kind of had it. Uh, we thought that they might do that, and we were never afraid of a sprint, you know. Yeah. Bit of an anxious moment when that flew out of your hand, laid on there, but it didn't prove costly. And you probably didn't even have time to think about it. No, I had plenty of time to think about it, unfortunately. <laughs> but uh, here, look, at, thankfully, we came out on the right side. Sure, running, and he was finding yeah, plenty for you yeah, that yeah, He was, he was. He's a very game horse. Yeah. He's a very you think you've got the top dog in the three-mile chase division now? Has he proved yeah, that? Yeah, actually, look, at he's, he's up among them anyway. But uh, time will tell. Fantastic. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Joined now by Martin Brazel, who's just sent out faster slow to pull off another huge win in the John Durkin Memorial Punchestown Chase. Martin, many congratulations. You said during the week that he had to come here and show people that it wasn't a fluke, that win in the Gold Cup here in the spring. Well, he did that. How proud are you of the horse? Delighted with him. He, um, you know, he's very professional. It's a great horse to jump, doesn't waste too much time in the air, loves, loves what he does. You know, he's, he's a lot of boxes you can tick and so that's what makes a good horse. Absolutely. I mean, coming here today, you were the only one in the field not trained by Willie Mullins. Was there almost like a David and Goliath feel about it for you? Uh, a little bit, yeah, but sir, we knew we had, a, we knew we had a, an able partner anyway in, uh, in racing against those horses. He, um, he never disappoints us at home, you know, he's, he just has a, he has a bit of class. Martin, what were you thinking watching the race? A little bit fresh early on, understandably, on his return from an absence, but did you like what you were seeing, how he was travelling and jumping? Yeah, he, he, he was in his hands for about a mile, of first mile of the race, which was a steady enough pace, so it's really only quick in there from the turn in. And uh, I just told him, I said, don't give him too much to do, just sit handy there, and I said, let them all have a go, and I said, you just wait till you're jumping the last, if, you, if it works out that way, so... That's the way it happened. Because there was a feeling, and I, mean, I suppose his form might back it up, that your horse could be better over a bit further than today's distance. But talking to JJ, it didn't sound like he had any fears about the way the race shaped up. Did you? No, we were worried about the, about the trip. Uh, first time he schooled him in the car, I'll never forget. He says, uh, you sure we're running this horse over the right trip? He feels like a two-mile chase. That's what he said. So, uh, no, he's not slow horse. He's not. Uh, but he does stay very well. He's got a great attitude to go with his undoubted class, Martin. Even when JJ lost his whip there after the last, he really stretched his neck out oh, and wanted did, to yeah. win, didn't he? Oh, he did, yeah. He wasn't, uh, he wasn't going to give it away anyway. And that hopefully is going to set him up for a great season once again now. I presume it'll be on to Leopard Centre Christmas after that, will it? Yeah, he's in the Savills, so he's about four and a half weeks till that. And uh, no, he's in good shape, so his weight was good. Everything was kind of positive anyway that we were going to find out for the second time, the level of his yeah. ability with those type of horses. So we were very happy. Yeah. Did you feel any little extra pressure coming here today? Because as I say, there was no real expectation on him when he won the Punchestown Gold Cup here in the spring, but a lot of people were keeping a close eye on him today, weren't they? Well, I, I was actually under more pressure that day because it was my suggestion that we forget about handicaps and throw him into that race. So uh, I felt more pressure that day probably than today. Mm. So. Uh, 
No, it worked out well. And they were all first time out today, and no doubt there'll be various different levels of improvement to come from each horse. But do you feel on the back of that that you've got the horse now who the rest of them have to aim at in this division now that he's backed up the win here in the spring? I suppose so, yeah. But like, tacti tactically today, if he finished her, you'd have said he'd be better going to three miles. But like, if you can buy the post there, he went straight, he, he took him, he got up to the next fence to pull him up. Mm. So, uh, stamina, I think he's going to be better going a trip. But he's so lightly raced as well, Martin. Of course, yeah. you had that bit of time off after you got him. Do you think there's really an awful lot more to come from him? Potentially? There is, yeah. He's lightly raced and sure, like, when you get a horse to that level now, that there's only a few races in the season for him. So I would do is keep him in the one piece and keep him fit and well. And Martin, there's been plenty of talk in the last few weeks about the superpowers of jump racing and how it's tough for the smaller trainers to take them. How many horses do you actually train at the moment? I have about 25 right now. I mean, do you relish the role of almost the underdog in that sort of race? Just you against five Willie Wallace horses. Yeah, it's nice. If you have sort of... I've always strived towards getting quality rather than quantity. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be able to manage 50, 60, 70, 100 horses. Uh, I just like to be able to concentrate on what I have and just treat them all what, what way they need to be treated. And uh, you know, when you have a quality horse and you have people to, to give them to you, sure you're you're lucky. And time and time again, you deliver the goods when you have the the raw material. You had a fantastic win in the Kerry National as well with Desert Moore House. How's he doing at the moment? He's doing well, yeah. We gave him a little five-week break after that. So uh, I have been in the Paddy Power at Christmas. And I suppose the long-term view would be maybe the Irish National. Mm. And maybe entry a little bit further down the line? I might put him in it anyway, just yeah. in case. If the if Fairy House come up a bog now, we might divert. Mm. And he has to get two runs over fences now to qualify for it. Mm. He needs to have six runs for entry. So he's had four. So he's been a revelation, really, that horse. It's been some year. You got a great reception today as well. I know a lot of the family were here too. I saw right. Connor there, your sons. Yeah. What did that mean to you, David, as well? Yeah. Ah, great. Sure, look, it's great to have him around the place. Uh, David's with me there. He came back from France three years ago. And Connor's been around all his life. So uh, uh, it's great. And dear to a whole lot of them are here. Except uh, me. You've been nominated for a Horse Racing Ireland Special Achievement Award in the National Hunt Academy as well. Um, how much of a boost was that to you? It was great. Yeah, it's always lovely to be nominated for, for those special awards. Yeah. You want to take a bit of beating after today? I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> That'll be the ice got the cake. It's been some year, Martin, and hopefully it's not finished yet. We'll see you at Leopardstown. All been well at Christmas. Well done. Lovely. Thanks, Gary. Thanks a million. Thank you. Watch live racing now on racingtv.com.